all these characters to help protect him. Alright, so we have uh, Bad Benny on the Terriel over on the blue side. Let, let, let me introduce the team first. On the blue side, guys, we have the Wild Merkis. Uh, it's in the chat, guys. Wild Merkis on the blue side right here. We have um, Bad Benny on the Terriel, Nick on Abatha, Joe on the Illidan, Wolf's on Greymane, and Linked on... Who's Linked playing? Linked is playing Uther. Is that the same link? Hmm. I'm not sure it's the same link that I have. Um, may have the, that player already on my friends list. I'm not sure if it's the same person or not. Anyway, let's get this going away with this one, guys. So Abathur Mind is dropping all around this watchtower in the middle. TCA moving as a five-man squad up to this one. There's going to be some vision going down from the Tassadar passive there. Still misses from the Moradin. Uh, actually, Zeph is being taken down pretty low, but there's a shield just to save him on the last second. There's some counterplay going on here. Both Tyrael and Greymane being taken very, very low there. Tyrael just escapes on the last second. Illidan taking a little bit of damage there, but he's going in onto Ward, trying to trade a little bit of damage back as well. Both teams managed to get out of this one. No kills going down here. Abatha in this bomb lane beginning to soak. Tassar is going to go down there from the side of TCA to face him. <laughs> a little bit of poke there as well. Um, so we see three members of TCA in the middle of the map right now, maybe looking to make some sort of a play. Tyrael kind of face check this one, walk straight into a hammer and some damage. There's a nice follow up from the Tarandi Blaze as well, and uh, Bad Benny takes a little bit of damage there, getting healed off the Muradin. There could actually be a counter kill there as Muradin's forced to dwarf toss away. Galfast versus the Greymane up in this top lane. Greymane's actually rotating down now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what temple teams uh, choose to go to first. Uh, normally the middle one's considered the most valuable because that's going to like open up the middle of the map, take this fountain, etc. And uh, make quite a big hole in the other team's de defences for later rotations and map play. So both teams seeming to contest this middle temple as we've predicted. Um, sort of like fights going down in the top and the bottom lane as well. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that Illidan hasn't come up before this and just left Abatha to soak that on his own. Um, it's kind of one of the main reasons why he takes the Abatha. So Illidan is moving up now into the Middle East, having to heal a little bit before he goes in. Tyrael taking quite a lot of damage there and he's actually going to go down. Nice pick up from TCA and TCA have uh, all five members now moving into this middle. Stun lands onto Link, followed up by a Tarandi Blaze, really nice uh, combo in there. Modin. Dwarf toss over the top, and Zephyr may find himself in a little bit of trouble there as the Greymane swiping into him. Illidan swipes back and uh, finishes that kill off. Protective shield goes down onto Greymane, and it looks like uh, Wild Mercury are going to be able to disengage this one. Illidan coming into this middle once again, going to try and contest, diving onto Tassadar, taken very, very low, but just ease on the last second to survive that one. Modin also being taken pretty low here, but manages to dwarf toss away. And last shots of this middle temple going over to the side of Wild Mercus. They both took about half shots each from this uh, temple. So top temple still to have pretty much every shot taken from it. Tyrael just starting that one off there for the side of Wild Mercus. Um, so TCA look like they're going to soak this one instead of trying to contest. No, no, three members are going to contest the top. Uh, Kale may be moving his way up there as well. Valor is soaking bottom. Uh, she has to really stay down here now, especially since that siege camp's been taken. That was really nice to uh, play from Wild Murky's right there. So TCA, at this moment in time, they do have control of this temple. They have uh, four members up here, but it's a 4v4. And that Abatha Hyde makes it a 5v4, so they need to be careful. Stun combo lands onto Tarandi, and she's taken pretty low. The shield not being able to save her. A lot of damage being returned, though, from TCA there with that Kale. Illidan just diving in on the Moradin, not doing too much, he's pretty much a brick wall. Um, Moradin just walking into that temple, trying to get the last few shots there, not wanting to give him up. Illidan getting some bombs thrown him, gets stunned as well. Taking pretty low, but he's probably going to be able to survive knowing Illidan, and he does on about 1 HP. So does Moradin, as a matter of fact. And uh, everyone pretty low here, but Wild Murky's ending up getting the last few shots. Yeah, Abatha has just been killed in the bottom lane, it looks like. Um, Valor being able to pick that kill up there. Uh, sneaky play by Ward. Modin diving in at the top lane as well, trying to hit onto that Illidan, but Illidan manages to get away and 
Moore didn't force to disengage it looks like, did go in for an extra hammer there and they did manage to get the kill with the Tarandi mark onto the grey main. Tyrion now being taken very low as well and Illidan may have found himself really deep. I guess three kills are in favour of TCA right now. Really nice play to get those pickups and they're going to be closer to level 8. So Abatha is soaking at the bottom lane. Teams will want to start doing the camps pretty soon now. Um, these hard camps should be started in like 20-30 seconds or so, so that they time in with the bottom temple coming up. Um, mid lane just being pushed out by TCA. And teams just starting to go up to their lanes, get ready to soak XP and get ready to take these camps pretty much before the next temples come up uh, in about a minute or so. Abatha being very safe behind this gate there, not risking uh, being rotated on. Wild Merc is starting their hard camp. So TCA they're doing their easy camp, they're going to go up and do their hard camp uh, probably shortly after this. Pretty much the later the, you take this camp the better. Um, be interesting to see what Wild Merc's do. They're just going to clear this it looks like. Uh, just clear this siege camp. TCA going to do the reverse, going to clear the hard camp on top. And this is what I was saying, it's probably a little bit better to do your hard camp a bit later. Um, so that definitely pushes in the top lane while the bottom uh, temple is up. But there's a four man push in the bottom lane right now. Wild Murky's going to start on this, going to be able to take this gate down. So that ends up being a little bit of an out rotation there by Wild Murky's. Um, they managed to clear the camps and are going to get uh, quite a bit of structural damage down here. Taking all that gate and the fountain already. They also, well, TCA is a little bit late on this camp as well now, and uh, Wild Monkeys get the advantage on these shots. Both teams are pretty much level 10 now though, so we'll look to see a quite a heavy team fight right now I'm guessing. Abathur is going to be up in this top lane, so that hard camp won't push as much as it would do against an unattained lane. Stun lands on Tyrael, is he in trouble here? He probably can dash away there, he has his sword, he throws it down and he teleports to it. So there's a clone on Illidan, so we're going to see double Illidan in this fight. Engagement looks like it comes down. We're in a little bit deep there, forced to dwarf toss out of that one. There goes the Phoenix and the Starfall as well. Really nice zone control with all that damage there from both of those. Uh, Divine Shield is actually forced onto the Uther. And Uther's getting followed up by a stun. There's the Tyrael uh, Sanctification, but I think Uther's in a whole world of pain right now. He's uh, stuck quite far out on this limb. There's the Valor uh, Raid of Vengeance, but Uther's still alive and Valor went too deep on that one. There's going to be two deaths on the side of TCA now. But um, they get two kills of their own in return, and that's a two for two in this fight. I mean, Uther did quite a good job of uh, staying alive for that length of time right there. Um, feel like Valor just came a little bit too deep trying to chase that one up. Uh, oh, Greymane dives in and actually destroys Tarandi there, but both players will go down it looks like. And it's not really a good trade two for one right there, a little bit greedy by the Greymane to go in on that one. Abathur still soaking in the top lane and we have about half a level advantage right now uh, on the side of Wild Mercus. I mean that would have been a little bit more if Deanna just lost those two players in the bottom lane. Uh, so kind of a little bit of a mistake there for them to do that. Tyrion going to be soaking in the bottom lane. Uther soaking this mid. Tassa from the side of TCA is going to take this watchtower. So we're going to have to see now what TCA looks to do to start to like gain control of this game, turn it around. The boss is started from Illidan here. A little bit of a risky player pre especially since that Tarandi Owl just went down. Illidan going to be starting this camp down here, this siege camp. Tyrael has eyes on TCA's siege camp so he's going to know if they start that in return. There's the owl going down, giving the vision that the TCA needed. But 13 talent advantages is on the side of Wild Murkies right now. So Wild Murkies are actually looking to take a fight aggressively. They want to uh, push this advantage. Uther going in for the stunt on Modin, but there's no follow up at all. Players having to back out here. TCA are going to be level 13 also very very shortly and then teams are pretty much even again so 
looks like Wild Murkies are going to take this uh, aggressive siege camp as well. Temple's up in five seconds, guys, so we have to be aware of this objective. Modin just trying to dive in there from the side of TCA to take uh, to like contest that one, but just a little bit too slow. And well, Temple's are up right now. So Wild Murkies move down to this bomb temple. They have Abathur Soaking in the top lane, so this is good for them. Um, they get an XP this whole time. Engagement goes down. There's the Starfall and Phoenix. That's a lot of damage, but really nice Tyrael sanctification to uh, deny most of that. Uh, Zephyr's being taken pretty low there. Has to use a uh, sprint, it looks like, to get out of that one. Uh, Valor also being taken. A lot of TCA members in trouble right now. Illidan is diving all over this show. Uh, Tassadar Shield saving Ward for a few seconds. Is he going to get away? Ward survives, just managing to dash out of that one. Uh, but Wild Mercury's end up taking that fight in the end. And that is a sprint at uh, level 13 off to land it. Tassadar just denying the uh, Abathur from taking that top temple a few shots. Wait, well, I've just noticed that Kale build that instructor has just mentioned in the chat. I mean, I feel like I don't. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think that's a good build at all. But okay. Um. <laughs> so. Um, Wild Murky's moving up to the top now. The boss was taken while I was looking at talent. Sorry about that, guys. I was just really confused that um, that build right there because um, that isn't the standard build at all. Um, and I was a bit confused over the sprint as well on Surrounding and the battle momentum as well. I'm a little bit confused with a few talents in this game, but okay. Wild Murky's, they've ended up taking the boss there on this hard camp. Um, Probably looking to take the rest of these top shots as well. There's only a, a seven or eight shots up there. Abathur just sitting in the middle lane, still doing his thing, soaking. And well, there's a whole nearly two levels ahead uh, on the side of Wild Murkies right now. TCA just doing everything they can to try and uh, hold themselves back in this one. Other than starting on this hard camp in the in his side of the map. And TCA, they're not level 16 still, so they just need to soak right now and try and do everything they can to stay in this one. But they're so structurally behind right now that it's they're going to need quite a lot to get back in this one. I mean, there's still two out of There's a whole gate down here in this bottom lane. Um, Wild Mercury's, they take both their hard and easy camp and they're moving in on this aggressive easy camp as well. TC8, they've just got 16 though, so if they're going to fight, they need to probably look to do it quite soon uh, before these objectives comes up. Because when the next temple comes up, if it's more than one temple, you, they're probably going to be in trouble because they're going to have to split them. Because Wild Mercury's can just trade even and they'll come ahead on structures at the moment. So a little bit of an engage going down there. The Starfall does pop. Illidan forced him out of Morphosis. He lands onto the Divine Shield. Phoenix also going down and Wild Murky's disengaging this one. They don't want to fight under Starfall and Phoenix. Great main being forced off to the side here. Tyrael has the sanctification. A little bit of damage being traded onto the Mummerdin, but not too much. And there's the Abatha clone going deep on the Illidan. Really nice rain of vengeance there, actually. Uh, no follow up from that seems to come and seems to just, uh, well, Wild Murky's are disengaging from this one. TCA trying to follow them. There's a sprint from Tamanda. Misses the Lunar Blaze though, and Wild Murkies look like they're just going to be able to disengage from this one and get away. Both of these camps have been pushing during that fight, so Top Gate has gone down and Siege Camp is pushing in bomb as well. So that was really nice from um, Wild Murkies to get that fight and make it last that long and not lose players because the camps are pushing in on their, on their side anyway. Um, Abathur's sat up in this top lane. So this is what I was talking about, there's now two temples up, and uh, Wild Murkies, if they wanted to, they don't even have to fight, they just can split and go to the other temple that TCA is at, um, and they'll still come out on top, because they can afford to lose them out of forts in exchange for a keep, um, by just trading temples. 
Illidan going in onto Swanny there. She's actually been taken really low and gets taken down. Greymane diving in as well. Valor taking quite a lot of damage as well. Actually, Illidan goes really low there. He may go down, but Sanctification saves him on the last minute. Really nice from that Tyrio there. Greymane goes down as well on the side of TCA. And all members of Wild Murky still alive, even though they are really, really, really uh, low right now. Um, they are still alive. Illidan's diving on to the Tassadar here, and... Well, Tassadar's in a whole world of trouble right now. He does have a second E, so he is managing to get out of that one. But, oh, Illidan's diving hard. He's diving hard, man. He's taking down here, Zash. Uh, Wild Murky's gonna take down these keeps right now. I wasn't sure whether they were gonna go for an end there. Uther and Illidan looking a little bit aggressive. They need all of their players there, and Valor and Kale are up any second. I, if I was Wild Murky, I'd just take the Temples, to be quite honest. Um, I mean, the level 20, they're, they're not going to lose a fight. Just take the Temples, get all the keeps down. I mean, if TCA were like level 19, I'd say, yeah, look to fight and take advantage of that 20. But since they're both like same talent advantage, it's not really too much. Uh, I mean, I mean, sorry. Since they're like so far behind in the uh, talent advantage, they can just take this and they'll still be ahead after taking both temples, so. So GG's were actually just called then, guys. Um, looks like TCA pretty much uh, saying, you know, we've lost this one. Well, I mean, TCA's not out of it yet I mean they've still got the core so anything can, I mean if TCA actually won a convincing team fight and wiped every member of um, Wild Mix they just won top and be able to uh, end the game so I mean it's not it's not over till uh, the fat lady sings Illidan taking quite a lot of damage there gets uh, divine shielded out of that one Uther actually will go down does he have redemption is he coming back alive in a second and the fight continues here, actually. Oh, let's just have this clone going in. Sorry about that. I thought it was a real Illidan for a second, guys. Uh, yeah, sorry. They've changed the artwork. So, uh, Uther will respawn in a second. There he is. And the fight's engaging. Now, Ward is being taken very low in that back line. Watchdog trying to do some damage onto Uther, but he's now stuck uh, pretty far out of position, getting killed. I mean, it, it's pretty much over for TCA at this point. Like we said, GG's were already called. Um, they know they've not got much chance since they don't have the 20 advantage, but trying to do everything they can to just get a few kills, maybe turn this one around. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's not really too much to say, guys. Uh, Wild Merc is just finishing this one up. I'm going to take the boss and then look to end with it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about why we think TCA may have lost this game. I feel like uh, Swanny should maybe have taken Shrink Ray on 13 for that Illidan. Um, and then I, I'm just really confused at what this whole build is going on from Kelfast right here. That's um, a bit strange to me. So the boss is pushing in now. The core is already on 40% and the temple is shooting. Alright, that's GG guys. And uh, Wild Murkies come on top in this round. And we'll be moving to through to the semi-finals. Uh, commiserations to TCA being taken out of this one. But yeah, Wild Murkies move through to the next round of the Zoltac Cup guys. We will be right back after a break.